Well, we got uh, 97,000 acres. Yeah, you know, I've been here six years, and um, I've, um, st that's when I started working on the acacia, but and we've been in the drought ever since I've been here, and this is probably the second year when it looked like it could be a turnaround. And um, yeah, in the spare time I've been just chasing uh, prickly acacia. Now, Trev, this is um, this is a bloody good job done around the dam here, but just explain to us how you spend your time and and how much time you've done. <clears throat> well, I start start of the day depend on my work schedule. I'd um, come to this say this area for instance, and um, probably put a half a day here, and that might go on for a week. I might do five or six days in a row just doing this. Then if I got it doing other jobs, I might have a couple of hours late afternoon. I'll come and do a bit more in late afternoons. That's how I handled it. As I went around my water run, I used to take 100 litres of access and, and diesel mixed up. And whenever I saw them, I used to do them. And um, it, it sort of evolved from there. And I um, uh, started on the dams. Um, in particular, work work dams. Some dams took me 16 months to clear, and um, this paddock here in particular took me approximately two years to clean this paddock. It cost you a lot of money. We, th this area, this paddock here around this dam here, it, it cost me two and a half, two and a half thousand gallons of uh, diesel in access here, you know, just around this dam. Well, the open areas. I don't worry about that a real lot because I know for a fact if it gets dry and you know six to ten months maybe 12 months that your uh, the little seedlings out there will not grow any further they will just die and you, you concentrate on your, your gullies your fence boundaries around your water points and those areas and that's you'll keep it under control I was born and bred on the land I worked with my father and that my father taught me right from the start uh, that this, these trees weren't any good and uh, from then on I knew how to, how to uh, get rid of it. I managed another property, I, I um, got rid of uh, acacia rubber vine and Parkinsonia and those sorts of things, I got rid of all that and uh, when I come to this place I more or less went on and done it, kept doing it, it's sort of in my blood. Yes we've been um, getting, uh, getting support from the uh, Desert Channel and um, they're doing a great job with me. I think it's a major threat, doesn't matter where you are. Um, so, um, if you let it go, it'll just overtake your country and, and, and reduce your carrying capacity for sure. And, and the other thing is you, you can't get, get into your water points. Like this one here, we had to have a chopper in one, one stage to get cattle out of it. And um, yeah, that's the biggest problem. The well, it's changed change the attitude towards um, mushroom cattle because you can see everything on this place now and um, it, it's a lot easier before you couldn't see any more than half a coat with uh, prickly acacia and um, I've been doing this here now for six years and it's getting better all the time. Well in five years I'd like to see the whole lot um, all done and clean. And, uh, but I know for a fact for the next 10 to, 10 to 15 years, the seeds will keep coming up, but not, not as many. You'll be able to manage it, no worries. And just got to, be keep, got to keep at it all the time. You just can't drive past them. Yeah. Industry, government and Desert Channels Queensland support the grazing industry in managing for change and a sustainable future on the rangelands.